Okay, here, take two. We'll be really quick so that the internet doesn't run out. So, uh, welcome. We're going to talk about uh, soil really quick. Um, these soil cycles are all interrelated, and so when we talk about one, we need to really talk about all of them to understand what we're talking about. So, let's just dive right in. Let me show you what we're looking at right here. So, when we're talking about pH, above pH 7, and where it's more alkaline, it's bacterial dominant. And so the form of nitrogen available is going to be nitrate. That would be NO3. And then below pH 7, it's more fungal dominant. That doesn't mean that bacteria is absent from uh, acidic conditions or that fun fungi are absent from alkaline conditions. It just means that they're dominant. So ammonium is the form of, of, of nitrogen available in acidic conditions below pH 7. And really, what these are, are products of these. So it's the soil life that has products that, of nitrogen that are either in either range. So they're really a byproduct, and that's really important to understand. Because when we till our soil, we create weeds. And the reason that happens is because we're cutting up the fungal hyphae, the mycorrhizal fungi, and then we're cutting it up and mixing it up and chopping and chopping and chopping. And so the only people, well, the only, <laughs> the only things there that are intact are bacteria and they're trying to put the glues back together for the fungi to tie together to make the macroaggregates. They make microaggregates, they make macroaggregates. That's why it's a secession. It goes from weeds to brassicas to mid-secession grasses and vegetables to the Solanum family uh, and then you have uh, like corn um, and uh, productive row crops. Then it's more perennials like shrubs, vines, and bushes. And that's pretty even um, between the two. And I'll tell you why in a second why they're both important. Deciduous trees have a little bit of, of bacterial dominant soil, but they mostly have fungal dominant. And then evergreen trees, even more so. And so why is it that there's a little bit of an overlap right there always? Well, it's because, whoop, it's because of this. Above pH 7, you have vegetative growth. Nitrates feed vegetative growth. And below pH 7, you have ammonium, which feeds reproductive growth. So plants actually need both of these things. And it's the no-till management that really gives you the ability to give your plants both of these. If you, you see the thing is, if you establish a no-till environment, the soil life will transport ammonium to areas that are that are dominated by by nitrates, and it's going to reorganize things in the soil for you to create balance. And that's why it's sometimes so miraculous and hard to believe when someone does a no-till operation and has a complete like uh, revolution in the soil. It's because they're 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 releasing all of this to the plants, and it's really important to understand that plants um, participate in an economy in the soil rather than get fed non -so fed soluble nutrients. So we typically fertilize, um, again, chemical fertilizers are all salts, and you water them in, and the water uh, solubilizes the salt, and then the soluble, salty water um, with the nutrient in it gets up, taken up by the plant. Uh, the salts also cut the organic matter in the humus and open that uh, and causes leaching, but that also makes soluble nutrients available to the plants. And the plants can't control how much they drink, so what happens is, they're just like force fed. It's like McDonald's like funneling down into them. And so whatever you've decided, if it's all nitrates, you're gonna get a plant that's all vegetative growth. And you're gonna get a plant with no fruit. You're just gonna have tomato that are all green and you don't have any fruit on them. If you have just ammonium, what's gonna happen is you're just gonna get, they go immediately to seed. It's gonna go immediately to fruit. And it's gonna be this small plant with lots of seedy fruits that didn't uh, develop very well because it was like, bam, we're gone. So when we notice these things, when we observe these things in, in our soil and in our gardens, um, we, can, we can understand what's going on. And then once we decide where we want to be on this scale, we can actually create compost 
that will, will tie you in to that. So let's say, hey, I don't want weeds. I'm getting weeds. I'm trying to grow like blueberry bushes, right? And everyone's like, you need that to be really acidic, right? We'll make a woody compost that's dominant in, 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 in like wood chips and stuff. And then you have a very fungal compost heap because wood is a complex carbohydrate, complex compound, and that needs a, a fungi to break down. And um, all the greens and all like the fresh cut stuff in the garden, that's all like all the simple sugars in that, um, those are t uh, broken down by bacteria. So if you did like, if you were growing stuff in here and you were actually had um, perennials that keep growing, you would do the whole molasses thing in your compost tea and that would that would feed all 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 the uh, the the more bacterial growth because um, the brassicas feed on uh, on on bacterial growth. It's actually actinobacterial right here. And so, if you're thinking about this as like disturbance, you disturb the soil, you cut it, and you make it like the moonscape that most people do when they're planting. And then what happens is you actually, as you establish it, you push it and further and further and further until you end up with an old growth forest. Um, and that's the natural secession. It wants to create a forest in most places where it can. Um, and that's just the natural secession and that's just the way soil pH works and that's the part of the nitrogen cycle and part of the fung fungal and bacterial processes and that's really why we need no-till operations um, if we want to have lasting um, soil life that that is is going to give us the best food because we want plants to choose what they eat rather than uh, be force-fed soluble nutrients because when they choose they're going to make um, balanced uh, nutritional foods and they're also going to make the most nutrient-dense foods because they're going to be able to take those nutrients in at the rate that they prefer. So that's just that. It's it may seem like a lot to take in. I'll post these pictures um, in the in in the comments. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Friday. And I hope you guys think about um, doing an area that's no till, maybe chop and drop, maybe sheet mulched. And I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And this is Matt Powers at Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. Have a great day.